In this segment, we're going to show you the safe and proper way to start steel handheld and backpack blowers. But before we dive into the starting procedure, Louie, there's a few basic safety precautions we need to follow while using them. Let's go. First, remember to always fuel your machine outside in a well-ventilated area and wipe off any fuel that might have spilled before starting your machine. And also make sure that fuel cap is tight. Always start your gasoline-powered tools a minimum of 10 feet away from where you fuel the machine. Notice that Casey has all his protective equipment on. He has his boots, gloves, glasses, and hearing protection. As much as I enjoy working with Casey, he and all other bystanders and pets should be at least 50 feet away while I'm using my blower to reduce the risk of eye or other injuries from throwing objects or debris. For starting any blower, you should always place it securely on a level, dust-free surface, like this grassy area. So let's get started, Louis. First, we'll cover the proper way to hold your blower when starting it. Starting a handheld blower, make sure you have firm footing. Hold the blower firmly with your right hand, press down, and grasp the starter grip with your left hand. For backpack blowers, hold onto the blower with your left hand and put one foot against the base plate to prevent the blower from moving. Use your right hand to grasp the starter handle. For blowers with a typical starter, pull the starter grip slowly until you feel it engage. Then give it a brisk, strong pull. Never wrap the rope around your hand and don't let the starter grip snap back. Guide it slowly back into the housing so the starter grip can rewind properly. Now it's gonna be very important to identify what types of controls you have on your blower before going any further. There are several versions or combinations of controls depending upon which blower you have. This is a manual on off switch. Before you start your blower, you always need to make sure that you place this in the on position. If you fail to do this, you will most likely flood the engine when you try to start it. This is a stop switch that automatically returns to the start position. It's a style used on many of the new steel models today. Once you turn the engine off and release the switch, it automatically reverts back to the run position. So you don't need to worry about this step the next time you want to start your blower. And this is the automatic switch used on backpack blowers. Push it down to stop the engine, release it, and it reverts back to the on position. This is a manual choke. When starting a cold engine, you'll need to put this in the cold start position. Then move it to the run position once the engine starts. Like the manual on-off switch, if you forget to move the choke to the run position once the engine starts, you may very well flood the engine. And this is a semi-automatic choke. When starting a cold engine, place the choke lever in the cold start position. Once the engine starts, Press on the throttle trigger and the choke will automatically move to the run position. Another great feature to help eliminate the chances of flooding your engine. So as you can see, the first thing you need to determine is what type of controls your blower has. To start the engine on all gasoline powered blowers, press the purge pump bulb at least five times, even if the bulb is filled with fuel. If your blower has a manual on off switch, throttle interlock button, and manual choke, like this BG55, move the stop switch to the run position. Set the choke lever to the cold start position. Engage the throttle lock by squeezing the trigger and the throttle lock button at the same time. Then, holding the blower in the proper position, as shown earlier, pull the starter rope. Once the engine tries to start, move the choke from the cold position to the run position. This step's real important. If you forget this step, you'll most likely flood the engine. Once the engine starts, squeeze the throttle to disengage the throttle lock and the engine will return to idle speed. If the engine was just run and is still warm, start the blower with the choke in the run position. To stop the engine, simply move the stop switch to the off position. Most of the newer steel blower models, like the BR200 and BG66, have the semi-automatic choke and on-off switch that automatically returns to the on position once the engine is turned off. For the semi-automatic choke, move the lever to the cold start position if the engine is cold. Once the engine starts, lift the throttle trigger and the choke will automatically move to the run position. If the engine was just run and it's still warm, leave the choke in the run position to start the engine. The BR200 has the same semi-automatic features that we just showed you. Unlike the handheld blowers, there are two additional simple steps you must go through with the backpack blowers. With the engine stopped and before starting, 
Check the air intake between the back plate and the power head of the blower for any blockages and clean if necessary. Also, you may need to adjust the carrying harness to suit your size before starting to work. So there you have it, whatever your preference, handheld or backpack blowers. Now you're educated on the starting procedure of your steel product. So go ahead, get that yard cleaned up. This is Casey Kralovic and Louie Casarella. See, See you next time. time.